Could Draco Malfoy be the most entitled kid ever? If only we had magic wands to abracadabra the entitled kids away. But entitled kids aren't just characters in fiction. Unfortunately, they're real. And sometimes, too real. Ah, the old I was watching TV excuse. What ridiculous thing does this entitled mother think she'll get away with because the TV happened to be on? Entitlement makes crazy only get crazier. This entitled mother does something unbelievable for nine hours and expects to get away with it. And our fan submitted story. This Karen makes some ridiculous requests on behalf of her entitled kid. What destructive thing does she do when she doesn't get her way? You'll only find out by watching this episode of Voicey Hears Entitled Parents. This story was called EM Misses Her Kid's Appointment because she was too busy watching TV. I'm an optician. In the cast, EM, mum, NK, nice kid, T, vision tech, FD, front desk receptionist. I'm mostly watching in the sidelines for this one, but I figured y'all would appreciate the story anyway. EM and NK come in and check in. They were a smidge early for their appointment, 15 minutes or so, and after they checked in, they sat down. NK was quietly playing something on an iPad. For those of you unfamiliar with waiting rooms, most have TVs where they play something for the patients to watch. For us, it's nature shows, so there doesn't need to be sound, just pretty fish swimming around. EM, for the most part, is watching the TV, totally enamored at the show. Sharks. Soon enough, 15 minutes pass by and EM gets called. EM? EM last name? EM keeps watching TV. T and I make eye contact and nudge towards EM. T shrugs and calls her name again, then retreats. Five minutes later, T tries again, and this time NK pokes his mum and whispers to her. EM shushes the kid and continues watching TV. T retreats again and tries another five minutes later, this time walking up to her. Excuse me ma'am, are you EM? Yes. What do you want? We're ready for you to come back for NK's appointment. Can't you see we're busy? Come back later. Ma'am, your appointment was booked 15 minutes ago. It's not my appointment, it's my son's. It's okay, mommy. I can go myself. What nonsense. We want to watch the fishes. Ma'am, we have the same show in the waiting room. Leave us alone. I will tell you when we are ready. That's not how appointments work. I don't care. I will stay here and watch my show. T and I make eye contact again and I shrug and go back to writing emails. T sighs and makes her way back to the office, probably to ask the office manager what to do. Ten minutes later, T comes out and talks with her again. Ma'am, if your son doesn't come in for his appointment, you will need to reschedule. This show is always on and you won't miss anything. EM ignoring T. Look, NK Dolphins! Ma'am, I... Oh, wow, look at that splash! Your appointment... Wow, NK, look at that! Okay. T walks out and other patients get called. Now this lady literally kept watching the two hour special and finally, after the credits rolled, she walks up to the desk. At this point I had gone to lunch and came back and she was still there. Okay, we're ready now. Sorry, for what? NK's appointment. Ma'am, you checked in over two hours ago. Your appointment is already finished. That's ridiculous, we never went back. T called you five times, well past your appointment time. Well, we were watching the fishes on your TV. I understand that ma'am, but your appointment was 10 a.m. It's now noon. You will have to reschedule. That's crap. We've been here waiting. It's not my fault that you had a good show on. Ma'am, as much as we appreciate feedback on our shows in the waiting room, you missed your appointment. I might be able to squeeze you in for a 3 p.m. if you're able to come back. No, we will be seen now. Mommy, the lady told you. Be quiet, NK. The grown-ups are talking. I'm sorry, ma'am. Other than rescheduling you, the doctor will not be able to see you today. We were watching this show. I understand, but you missed your appointment, so we will need to reschedule you. It's not for me, it's for him. Jabbing her fingers at the little boy. Then we'll have to reschedule him for his eye appointment. You people are ridiculous. If you don't want people watching TV, don't have them on. I apologize for having entertainment in the waiting room. Can I reschedule you for the next available appointment? EM turned bright red and and threw her hands up in the air and stormed off without her kid. The poor kid stood there for a few moments before running after his mum. I went over and congratulated FD for her unyielding patience. You'd think that this patient has never been in a waiting room before. It's called a waiting room because you're waiting for them, not the other way around. She sounds upset like they've wasted her time, when really she's the one who's wasted theirs. Somebody else could have had that booking as well, so really, she's cost them that revenue as well. 
This story was called, EM freaks out when I don't know where her kids are, but she dropped off at the theatre nine hours earlier. When I was in college, I was the assistant manager of a four-screen movie theatre in a small town. In the summertime, many children's movies would be released, and Disney would release classic kids' movies. So we would usually put the kids' movie in our biggest theatre, because jerks would pull up in a van, open the door, and drop off ten kids with cash, and peel out to get away as fast as possible. Sometimes, as a manager, I had to work double shifts. This was one of those days. I don't remember this woman buying the movie tickets and dumping her kids off, but from what I later learned, she did so for our first showing of the kids' movie. We locked the entrance doors 30 minutes after the last film starts. All the exit doors are open until we closed. At 10 o'clock that night, the kids' movie had been over for about 45 minutes. A woman began pounding on the exit door from outside. I opened it and asked her how I could help her. I need to get in, my kids are inside, said the entitled mother. EM from here forward. I had just ushered the active theatres and didn't see any children in the adult-oriented films. Which movie did they see? I asked. She named the kids flick that had let out 45 minutes earlier. I'm sorry ma'am, but that film ended nearly an hour ago, and we've already cleaned the theatre. There's no one in there. She demanded that she look. She seemed frazzled, so I agreed and turned on the house lights in the kids' film theatre. She walked up and down the aisles, looking down each row. We cleaned the rows individually, but I didn't think that information would help the situation. She then demanded to check the other theatres. I accompanied her to the front of each one and let her look, using the light from the screen to look at the audience. She finally agreed that the kids weren't in the theatre. Well, what are you going to do about it? EM demanded. I was stunned because my responsibilities do not include babysitting patrons. I told her so. I dropped off my nine-year-old, seven-year-old and four-year-old at your theatre this afternoon. You had custody of them at that point. They are missing. What are you going to do about it? I said, this afternoon? You expected them to stay here for nine hours? By the way, it's not my responsibility to take care of your children for nine hours. I actually have a business to run. You should have accompanied your children to the one film you bought tickets to and then taken them home. If you couldn't be bothered to do that, you should have checked the ending time of the movie and told your kids when you were going to pick them up and where to wait. Expecting me, a stranger, to parent your children better than you are willing to is stupid on your part. This did not go over so well. She flipped out and started cursing at me. Then she threatened to call the police on me. I had had enough and demanded she leave so I could finish my paperwork and get ready for the rest of the movies to let out. She left screaming and cursing. I'm counting out our banks for the next day and when I hear a banging on the exit door again, I was ticked and ready to call the cops on her. Exiting my office, I see she is back with a police officer. I open the door and let them in. The officer said, Hello ma'am, this woman said you are holding her children here against her will and she wants them back. At that point, two of the theatres open and the guests start leaving. I explained to the officer what actually happened and that I had allowed her to search the theatre already. He let out a deep sigh, looked at her, and then asked, May I search the theatres myself? Of course. He searched the theatres that were empty first, and by the time he got to the last one, it was letting out. He told EM that the children were not there. She demanded that he charge me for losing her children. He explained that if anyone gets charged with neglect, it would be her. She started to cry and he escorted her out, thanking me. How much of a failure of a parent do you have to be to just dump your kids in a movie theatre for nine hours, expecting them to basically babysit your kids? You just know she was thinking, well this is a great idea, I can have the whole day off, only for it to end up being the worst day of her life. This story was called, Entitled Mum Tries to Steal My Mum's Purchased Parking Space. So here's the cast, my mum, entitled mum, principal. So when I was in first grade, my mum would drop siblings and I off at school every day. She purchased a parking space reserved for her because she would park in her spot to drop us off rather than waiting in line. And she also helped in school events a lot. The parking spot had a sign that said, reserved for my mum. So one day as my mum was pulling into the school, another car was parking in her spot. My mum kept her cool and found a parking space much further out, then ran over to stop the driver before she went into the school so that my mum could get her spot back. On this specific day, my mum had a lot of supplies to carry in to help in some school event. This is paraphrased from what I kind of remember and from what I've been told. Excuse me, ma'am, but this is my spot. Oh, okay. Then she just kept walking into the school. Uh, can you please move your vehicle so I can park here? How do I know this is even your spot? Because my name is on the sign right in front of your car. 
Please, ma'am, I purchased this spot. Just move your vehicle. No, I got here first. I need the spot more. You barely got here before me. And even if you needed the spot more, I paid for it. But I need the spot to walk in my kit. I need to get to work. Okay, so just walk your child in and then please move. So my mum ran back to our car to wait for the EM to leave. We came early anyway so we could wait since school wasn't starting for a few minutes. Ten minutes passed, so my mum just sent my siblings and I in, and she went back to the EM. Ma'am, please move. Why should I have to move? Because this is my spot. I thought you had to go to work. I shouldn't have to move for rich pricks like you just because you bought this spot. This spot didn't even cost that much. I only have it because I help the school often and I need a place to carry things in. Bull crap. I'm staying here as long as I'd like. So my mum goes to retrieve the principal to help with the situation. Ma'am, you have to move. This isn't your parking spot. I don't have to do anything. I have the right to park here. Ma'am, not only is this the person's spot, so she should have it anyway, she also needs it to carry in supplies for the event she organized, and supply today for the school. Please, ma'am. No, I'm not moving for you jerks. Ma'am, this is an elementary school, please try to be calm. Eventually, the entitled mom sped off after being very late for work, and my mum took her spot to unload supplies. My mum made sure to come early for a while, and almost every day that entitled mum would show up and pull up to my mum's spot, only to find her there. Then she would dangerously speed down the parking lot to find a more distant spot. There were a few other people who stole her spot on accident, but they all apologised and moved for my mum. A paid parking spot's one of those things that's really hard to enforce because unless it's only accessible through some sort of gate, literally anyone with a car can just drive into it and walk away. And unless you get the tar code, you can't really just push a car away. I think the entitled mom knew this. So it's like, well, what are you gonna do? Considering the principal is the one who is talking to you and telling you to move, and they're the ones that could expel your child from the school, you probably don't want to tick them off too much. Probably best to just move. This fan submitted story was called, Karen and her kid think they can take someone's job. Didn't exactly happen to me, but I watched it. So I'm putting it here. The crew, Karen, Karen's kid, Joe, a very nice man, me, well, you know. All right, here we go. So for a bit of context, my mum was going to the grocery store and I was supposed to wait in the car for whatever reason. It was very hot out, so I rolled down the windows and could hear a lot of what was going on outside. I also happened to know one of the guys who works as one of the cart people at the store, a wonderful dark-skinned man who we'll call Joe. We're parked right next to one of those things people put in their carts in after shopping. I'm listening to music, playing on my phone, whatever. I wave hello to Joe, who is collecting the carts. Suddenly, a wild Karen appears. Uh, excuse me, sir. Hello, ma'am. How can I help you? My lovely son was looking for a job at this store. Could you help him get one? Sorry, ma'am. I don't think we have any positions available right now. And besides, he looks too young to work anyway. At this store, you need to be 16 to work. Keep in mind, this kid looks max 12. Oh, please. My son needs to work. He needs to be able to support our family. Sorry, but you need to talk to the owner. I can't be of any service. <sighs> Fine then. She storms off and Joe sighs with relief. He walks over to me and we talk a bit about the weather and stuff. He walks back over and starts to put the cards back together. And Karen returns. She said there were no jobs here. My son needs a job. Sorry, there's nothing I can do. Mother, if someone quits their job, there'll be an opening, right? Or if someone gets fired. I knew where this was going. I bet there would be an opening if immigrants like you didn't take all of our jobs. She then seems to fully take in what her son is saying. She stares at Joe. You need to quit your job now. What? If you quit, I can have the job. Sorry guys, but I like my job. If you don't stop yelling, I will call my manager. He holds up one of the walkie-talkies the guys who worked in the parking lot use. Karen is getting really mad at this point, screaming slurs at him. I figured things were getting too heated, and pulled out my phone and recorded what was going on, just in case. Karen suddenly rips a card away from him, and wheels it into what I assume was her car, leaving a sizable scratch and a small dent. She turns to Joe. Good luck keeping your job now. 
She then runs inside the store. A couple minutes later she returns with the owner, a lovely older lady who taught my brother's skating lessons. We're calling her Miss M. Karen is downright crying, telling them how this man ruined her son's life and wrecked her car. I don't think Joe would ever do that. No, he did. People like him do things like that all the time. Me from inside my car. Hey, Miss M. Oh, hello. I thought you might like to see this. I pulled out my phone and showed her the three minute long video of her screaming and slamming the cart into the car. Karen just stood there, pale as a ghost. Kay, how about you come inside with me and we can talk about the situation. I don't know what happened when they were inside, but Joe kept his job and I never saw Karen again. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.